So, do you watch Real Housewives of Potomac? Because that's what I'm here to talk about now. So Sunday night it aired. I did not watch it Sunday night. I don't remember what I was doing or even if I was in the house. But I didn't. I missed it. So I watched it last night, which was Monday. And I had seen a few things online about uh, Candace and Monique having uh, physical altercations. So, of course, I wanted to watch it. And besides that, I am a fan of the show and I have been watching since season one. So, The Real Housewives of Atlanta is my first fave of the Atlanta House of the Housewives series. And then um, Potomac is the second favorite. But I had start trying to watch Beverly Hills now since uh, Garcelle Bouvet has joined. A black woman had joined. And I used to watch, uh, was it New York? New Jersey? I don't know. With um, the Judices. I, I used to watch that maybe first or second season, but... I always stuck with the Housewives of Atlanta, and then when Potomac Housewives came about, they became my second fave Housewives show, um, because they are women of color, and they were bougie with their drama, you know, not like the Atlanta Housewives. These were a different caliber? I don't know. <laughs> but I, li I like them. Potomac Housewives. So I have been a fan since season one of the show. Now, if I forget some names, then I forget some names because that's just me. I forget names. But anyway, the episode that I want to talk about uh, now is Sunday's episode in which Candace and Monique had a physical altercation. So apparently, there have been some issues. They have had some words here and there, disagreements, but these two were friends or they've each said it about each other that they were friends and then they've had disagreements and they're not so friendly. And if they were ever really true friends, I don't know why it had to come to this, but it did, right? Um, me, I'm against it. I'm totally against it because I... I don't condone violence, especially if someone doesn't put their hands on you first. I don't care how much mess a person talks. You shouldn't let that person's mouth take you to that level. I've always said, you know, as a mom, I don't care how much mess a person talks. Let them talk. Like, never let a person see you that bothered, that they can get you that bothered. You know what I'm saying? You should always remain unbothered. If you can't take the talk and if it's getting under your skin like that, that much that you want to cause physical harm, just leave. I mean, no one's making you stay in that conversation. You know, just leave. Disengage. Go on to the next person. Conversate with the next person. Um... You know, just ignore that person over there. Um, like Candace, she's not necessarily my fave platonic housewife because she do talk a lot of stuff. And she has had something to say about everything, especially Ashley. Like she's always got something to say about Ashley's marriage and whatever that goes on in that marriage. And, you know, I just, she's just not my fave. She's not. Like, I don't know. I don't hate her, but she's just not my fave. Uh, Monique would be because she seems a little more grounded, I would guess. I don't know if that's even the right word, but she would be. Um, I like Ashley. Giselle, mm, um... Mm, the Grand Dame, she's okay. I mean, I like all the housewives of Potomac, but, you know, we all have our faves, right? So, anyway, they were out, and they were having a discussion, and it kind of got a little heated. I don't even... 
I don't even think that it was that serious. It just wasn't that serious. But I guess apparently for um, for Monique, it, it was. It got that serious. And I just don't approve. And Monique had made a post on her uh, social media. She was just saying, you know, it was a picture of herself. And she wanted to get the feedback from everyone. Like she said, say your piece. She's not into blocking people unless you're like really totally disrespectful, whatever, whatever. So just let her know what you thought, what you feel. And uh, I did. And I just told her that I thought she was wrong because if she don't hit you, don't hit her. I don't care. Even that, you know, first she started off, she was flipping her hair like, you want me to? You want me to? You know, they're talking stuff, and Monique was flipping Candace's hair. And then, I don't know, whatever. And then, for some reason, she she took a kung fu grip on Candace's head, uh, a head of hair, and it was just on from there. And she, like, it took so many people to pull her off of Candace. And I didn't see it um, during this altercation. And it was, like, so calm. Like, it was really, really calm because Monique wasn't screaming. Candace wasn't screaming, like, bitch, get off me. Or, you know, it wasn't none of that going back and forth. It was just like, or did I miss that? I'm going to have to go on. I might go and look again, but it was... Um, yeah, it was just crazy and uncalled for. So Monique grabbed Candace's hair and she had the death grip on her head. And I guess at some point during that, uh, Candace swung around the glass she was drinking from and she hit Monique in the face because after the fight, after they finally pulled those two apart, um, well, Candace's first thing was, oh my God, is my wig on? Like, yeah, um, the grand dame was like, yeah, your wig is on, blah, 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 And, um, whoever, who was it that went up to Monique and was telling her she was bleeding. So she was bleeding somewhere in her face because evidently, uh, Candace swung, swung around and caught her with the glass she was drinking from. But if you can't blame Candace for that. She have to, you have to do what you have to do. When someone's got that grip on you, you got to do what you have to do to get that person off of you, right? Um, so I understand Candace's embarrassment. She don't want to be out there. She don't want to be made to look like that girl, that hood ghetto girl out here fighting and Monique I don't think she should want that for herself either she's a mom of young children she has a husband who is formerly a, an NFL player and you know it's not even just all about you it's about your children it's about your husband everything but in that moment for Monique everything went out the window what do you think about the fight do you think that Monique was wrong or do you think like it is what it is Candace kept talking smack, and she got what she was asking for. I just don't agree with anyone putting their hands on another person who hasn't touched you. Like, I don't care. Don't come in my space. Um, you can talk all the job you want to talk. I don't care. You can say what you want to say. I don't care. But just don't touch me. Do not touch me now. If Candace had a hit Monique first, and Candace did what she did. Fine, I don't. Have, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but just Candace standing there talking, and you're letting her. You're that bothered by her. Why? Why? If you know y'all aren't cool, if you feel it getting to you like that. I mean, I understand that feeling, that feeling when uh, someone is talking so much stuff to you that you really want to, but you can't. You have to be above that. You have to be better than that, right? And I just didn't agree with it. And I let Monique know that on her page that I didn't agree with it. And, and y'all, there are two beautiful black women 
And we already have enough stereotypes out here. Not even to say that this moment would make the stereotypes or whatever is floating around out here about black women. It's not going to make or break it. This is there. It's not going anywhere. So what, right? But you guys are both two beautiful black women. You both have things going on for yourselves. And that's just not the look you want. That's just not the look they want to go for. Um, and then also consider your husbands and you know how people will talk about, oh, he's married to that ghetto girl or ghetto woman or whatever, whatever, or whatever people might say. Not that you should care what people say, but don't give them a reason to talk. Not about something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just not even worth it. It's just not even worth it. And I just like, don't be too big where you can't apologize for when you were wrong because Monique you were wrong for putting your hands on Candace point blank period you were wrong you should have just walked away um, because you don't have to stay there and engage in any conversation with her there were many other um, people around there was uh, Giselle there was Karen Robin uh, uh, Ashley they were all there so Disengage from, disengage from Candace and, you know, talk to the other ladies. Like, you know, it's old, but move around. It was just, just not that serious to me. And I'm so curious to know what you guys thought about that fight. If you saw it, I mean, let me know. Like, what would you have done? Have you, like, went all out? Have you gone all out? On someone just for talking I'm, I'm not I'm just not gonna do it um, so another thing about that episode that um, was like a whoa moment Giselle what do you guys think about Giselle and her and Jamal Bryant rekindling their relationship uh, well I know from years ago Many, many years ago, he was all in the news. A pastor who was sleeping with this, that, and this other female in the church. And he had this baby over here, a baby over there. He was married and he cheated on his wife. And he was just like um, a pimp of pastors, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And... Even way back then when I was hearing about those rumors of Pastor Jamal Bryant, I didn't even know who Giselle was. But even though I knew he was married, I didn't know of her that she was. I mean, I didn't research it or anything like that. I'd never been to his church or anything. But just the point of him being a pastor and all of everything that was floating around out there in the universe about him, I was thinking even back then, like, I wouldn't even want to be a member of his church. Like, how can he teach you anything when he's doing all the wrong things? You know what I'm saying? And I do understand that pastors are just men, the men pastors. They're just men. They're not God, even though some people hold them in that regard. They're men, just men. So I give you a pass on just being a man. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to come and sit in your church and listen to you preach and teach me anything. Just not, no, I wouldn't have done it. So anyway, back to Potomac, the Housewives of Potomac and Giselle telling her dad last night that she and Jamal were rekindling their relationship. She told her, her dad that Jamal had bought a restaurant for the girls. It would be their business. Um uh generational wealth they're gonna you know start this and get it for their girls and um everything and her dad he tried to be supportive he wanted to be supportive but also before i get to my next point i wanted to state that even when giselle brought it up to her children that she and their dad were you know trying to work things out. She feel like he's grown. He's a different person, blah, blah, blah. The girls weren't even feeling that. Like, yeah, 
love you mom i love you dad but i love you mom over here doing your own thing i love dad over there doing his own thing and we love the time that we get with each of you apart or together whenever they would do things as a family because they co-parent right even her girls weren't feeling that and i'm not sure if they still are or not but hey it's yeah. you can't do it for the kids and in this case they're not because the kids aren't even 100 percent on board with it but what can they do they're just kids in t-way moving on moving right along um so they were doing the opening night of the restaurant or maybe it was the next night after the ribbon cutting she invited her dad out giselle did it was Giselle, the girls, and Jamal, and they're sitting at the restaurant at the table. They're eating, and then they sent the girls away, and um, so her dad tried to make some small talk with Jamal, and mm, he just really wasn't feeling it, and I think he also wasn't feeling it because Jamal didn't even look her dad in the eyes. You know, he, was, he wasn't sitting straight forward. Jamal was kind of sitting sideways, and yeah, you know, this, that, and the other, trying to make a little small talk. The dad got up, and he was like, well, you know what? I got to use the bathroom, or I got to pee. I don't know if he said I got to pee, or I have to use the restroom, but he got up from that and left that table, right? So he gets away from the table, uh, out of their sight line, and he's like, take this uh, mic off me. I'm done. Like, he said he can't do it. He, don't under, he just was not with it. He do not understand for his life's sake why Giselle would want to put herself through that again or even give that another chance after everything that he put her through, this, that, and the other. And this is a man that loves his daughter. And, you know, we want our children to be happy, but don't mean we have to agree with everything they do. And he was not in agreement. So it will be interesting to see if they bring that up again in next week's episode. Um, because I know they're going to be talking about uh, they're going to be talking about the entanglement with Candace and uh, Monique, the the physical altercation. And let's see, there was another thing: Karen and her husband, the black. What did she used to call him? <laughs> the software king. Uh, mm, it was Karen and her husband. And they brought in, I don't know, if it wasn't a therapist. I think more like a life coach or whatever. And Karen had already been saying in episodes leading up to this one that things were different. And Ray wouldn't tell her that he loved her. He wouldn't say those three words. And... You know, she feel a disconnect and she believes that it's since or because she started her own business, blah, blah, blah. She's doing her own thing. But she has a perfume line out, right? And I'm thinking, like, it's perfume. I don't know if she have how many scents she has. I have not researched it. I have not smelled it. I have not seen it in stores. But I actually haven't been to stores like that since coronavirus. You know, we've been on lock. And whenever I do go to stores, that's not been on my radar, honestly. It just hasn't. But anyway, they brought in, a, uh, well, she brought in a life coach to talk some things through with Ray. And uh, the, the lady asked Ray, Ray, Karen's husband, if he was in love with her. And he says, I think I am. Like, he didn't say, oh, yeah, I'm in love with my wife, blah, 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 anything like that. He was just like, I think I am. But, you know, she's different. She's not the Karen who I married. She's not the Karen she was five years ago, 10 years ago, but that's a good thing, right? Well, you're not supposed to be the same today as you were five years ago or as you were 10 years ago. The goal is to learn and to grow, right? That's the goal in life. You don't want to be stuck being the same person all your life. I mean, you're always going to be you, but the goal is to be a better you with time, right? So that really upset her, and uh, she went off, went to her room crying, wanted to take the uh, mic off again. You know, she wanted to take the mic off, and 
she just wasn't expecting to hear that. But I'm not understanding why when prior episode, she was asking him to tell her the three words and he was just like, okay, okay, okay. You know, he didn't say it. So when a person tells, shows you who they are, believe them. You know what I'm saying? Like he's, he can still love her, but just because you still love a person doesn't necessarily mean you're still in love. And he just said he didn't know. He didn't know. And he was being honest. And wouldn't you prefer honesty? You know, you know what you have to work with. Y'all can figure out if y'all want to work on it and get back to that love or if it's better that you guys, you know, move apart. Give me the hard truth and let me deal with it instead of a um, a sweet old lie. Any day, I'll take the hard truth. Um, anything else happened in that episode Sunday that I wanted to discuss? Uh, no, I think that was the three things. And I am really interested in knowing your thoughts, especially on the physical altercation between uh, Monique and Candace. I want to know what you think or thought about Giselle's dad. Do you think he should mind his business? She's grown. She should be able to date and do whoever she wants. And yeah, she should be able to, and she will. I'm sure she will. But do you think her dad was uh Stepping out of line. I mean, he didn't say it directly to her. She's going to see it if she watched the episode back, of course. But how do you feel about her dad and his thoughts on them rekindling and getting back together? And also, Karen. Like, Karen and Ray, their situation. They've been together for a number of years, so you can't expect change, right? Um. So, yeah. That was a really good episode, and I'm looking forward to next week's episode because um, from the preview, it looks like Monique will try to get the girls together, and they really don't want to be around her at this point, and after she just snapped off like that. That's another thing, because Monique says she blacked out. Do you think she blacked out? Like... She says she don't remember anything after... I don't know, a certain point in the during the physical altercation. She says she does not remember what happened. She remembers flipping Candace's hair. Um, I don't even think she knew she had got hit in the face until whoever that was, Ashley or uh, Karen, told her, like, you're bleeding. You Do you know you're bleeding? Um, and then I think in the preview someone said, I think it was Robin, actually, who who said that um, she looked in uh, Monique's eyes and it was like the devil. So she probably did snap out. She probably did. Well, we know she snapped out, but she probably did black out. Like, she just probably did. And I just don't think it, she, it should have gotten that far, period. I just don't think that it should have been. That's just my opinion. And again, please share yours. So thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate you watching. I really appreciate the comments and the, um, you know, the interactions with me here and I'm thankful for them. And yeah, subscribe, like, share, comment, hit the notification bell and let's keep talking about it. Let's keep talking about everything. Oh yeah. Are you watching the debate tonight? What time is it? Almost seven CST. So I'm going to check it out until they get on my nerves. But thanks for watching and uh, leave some comments below. Let's talk about this. Real Housewives of Potomac.